Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally hit the home stretch. This is the final mock draft. The NFL draft is on Thursday. I am just as excited as you guys are. For those who have subscribed to the channel, you have seen that I have made surprising picks, surprising trades. Some were unpopular, some were popular. But in this final mock draft, I will try to be as accurate as possible of what I may think will happen on Thursday. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Pick one, the Chicago Bears. No explanation for this pick. We all know it's going to be Caleb Williams. So pick number one, Caleb Williams. Pick two, the Washington Commanders. Um, I've seen a lot of mock drafts, and me personally, of this pick being either Jaden Daniels or Drake May. I just feel like in this division specifically, the NFC East, you're going to have to go face the Giants twice this year, deal with Brian Burns. Thibodeau, Dexter, then you have the Eagles, and then you have Michael Parsons on the Cowboys twice a year. So whoever they pick in this spot as a quarterback is going to have to take some hits and make throws with players in their face. So between May or Daniels, I'm going to give Drake May the edge just due to his NFL build them trading Sam Howell away. I doubt they want like a little UNC quarterback competition. So I believe pick two, we're going to go with Drake May. Pick three, the New England Patriots. I don't think they should get cute with this pick. Yes, entertain some trade down scenarios, but they need a franchise quarterback to, you know, develop and learn behind Jacoby Brissett. Don't get cute. Don't trade back. Jaden Daniels. Pick four, the Arizona Cardinals. I believe this is where the Minnesota Vikings are going to call in with their 11, 23rd, and next year's pick to try to, you know, move in the top five and get JJ McCarthy. Um, I don't think the Cardinals should bite on these offers unless Justin Jefferson's involved. I doubt he will. Um I don't think the Cardinals should move back that far back into like pick 11 and miss out on like Harrison and neighbors. So I think the smart decision for the Cardinals was to, to stay at four, give Kyler Murray his big target weapon. We'll give him Marvin Harrison Jr. Pick five, the Los Angeles Chargers. We've all seen throughout, you know, lying season of Jim Harbaugh talking up JJ McCarthy, that he's a top five quarterback. It's very enticing to see what the Chargers would do. I mean, will they stay and take Malik neighbors? Herbert needs receivers. Or do they bite at the Vikings and their trade offer? If it were to me, I think this is a situation where Harbaugh may want to take that trade package and just build the team his way and just use that extra capital. So we're going to go with the first trade in this draft, and it's going to be the Chargers and the Minnesota Vikings. It's a two-round mock draft. I don't want to get too, too precise with trade package. I just want the similar to pick it up. Um, so we're going to do Cardinals, uh, Chargers, and the Vikings. So 5, 11, 23. The Vikings have moved into pick five. They are afraid that the Giants may scoop up J.J. McCarthy and have Dable develop him. So the Vikings get a bit of aggressive. Make that trade with the Chargers. So pick five, the Minnesota Vikings, they get their quarterback of the future, J.J. McCarthy. Pick six, the New York Giants. I think, if you ask me, I think the one quarterback in this draft that Brian Dable will love to get is Drake May, very similar to Josh Allen. They will play a big role in developing Josh Allen. So if there is one quarterback, if, they're, if the Giants are going to trade up, is for Drake May. But it's going to take a lot of capital, and I don't think it would be smart for the Giants to try to even entice the commanders or the Patriots if May falls to the third pick. So here they are. The Giants should stay at six. I think this is the, the wisest decision. And I think with this pick, we're going to go with Malik Neighbors. Pick seven, the Tennessee Titans. Poor tackle play the past few years. If Will Levis is the franchise quarterback and you need to give him time to 
give the ball to Hopkins, Ridley, or whoever they may draft later on to draft for another wide receiver option. We need to protect Will Levis. So pick seven. We are going with Joe All. Pick eight, the Atlanta Falcons. In my last mock draft, I had Kenyon Mitchell, but the Falcons seriously need to take care of the edge position. I mean, maybe a team like the Colts or maybe the Jaguars may want to just trade up with the Falcons to kind of get Roma Dunze before the Bears, but I think that's going to take some rich draft capital and don't think that will be wise for those two particular teams. So I think right here the Falcons should stay and they should get edge one, which is Dallas Turner. Pick nine, the Chicago Bears. This is a team that's lacking in draft capital. I believe they have about four picks this year. Um, if a team really wants to trade up and get Roma Dunze, I mean, this is a pick where I don't think the Bears should, you know, skip out on and trade back. But I could see like a team like maybe the Colts or the Jaguars just move up a few spots, give the Bears the draft capital that they want so they could trade back. But I don't think either of those teams would want to do that. So we're going to go with pick nine, the Chicago Bears. Let's go with Roma Dunze. I think Keenan Allen is only there for a year. So just, you know, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. And then next year, once, you know, Caleb Williams has that one year of NFL experience, he has someone they can rely on on the rookie contract as well with him, Roma Dunze. So Roma Dunze will be a smart pick for the Chicago Bears and just add more playmakers for Caleb Williams. Pick 10, the New York Jets. I believe they should be in win now mode. Um, you know, this might be Aaron Rodgers last season. They have Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. I think they should add an additional pass catcher. If I'm Joe Douglas, I wouldn't be surprised if they should just call the Cincinnati Bengals and just try to get T. Higgins to come over. Aaron Rodgers does not like rookie receivers. We saw how that played out on the Green Bay Packers. So I don't think getting him like a day one contributor rookie receiver would be enticing to Aaron Rodgers. I think the Jets should just make win now moves and just try to call the Bengals and get T Higgins, but we're not going to play with that scenario. So pick 10, it is vital for the Jets to protect Aaron Rodgers. So this is an offensive lineman pick for me. So the best offensive lineman for the Jets that I think that they should draft is Troy Fatunu. Out of all five positions on the line, he can play four. Left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle, probably not center. But if anyone were to go down, he's a plug-and-play starter, and he may win the job in the offseason. So Troy Fatunu to the Jets. Pick 11, the Los Angeles Chargers. They need receiving options. They also need a lineman to take care of the right side with Slater on the left side. With this pick, I'm going to have to go with Brock Bowers. I know they got Disley. I know they got Hayden Hurst. But I just think that Brock Bowers brings another element of receiving options. You could have him. In two tight end sets, you can have him as a big slot. I'm sure Hobbock can just kind of have him like on the boundaries. You can get very flexible with um, Brock Bowers, and I think this is a player that Jim Harbaugh loves. Not at pick five, but pick 11 with additional capital. I think this will be a Jim Harbaugh pick game, Bowers, at this spot. So pick 11, Brock Bowers. Pick 12, the Denver Broncos. Unfortunately, they don't have that much draft capital to beat the Vikings to the punch to get, you know, J.J. McCarthy. And I'm sure they're going to want to get a trade back partner to get that, you know, second round pick. The only two teams in the first round that have that additional second round pick are the Packers and the Eagles. Doubt they're going to want to trade up from their spots all the way to pick 12. That's too high. So I think the Broncos are a bit shafted here and stuck at pick 12. Don't think Bo Nix or Penix are is worthy of pick 12 here. They can go edge. Jared Verse will be a solid pick. Or they can go with Terrian Arnold or Kenyon Mitchell. I believe with Patrick Sertain there, and you're in a division with, you know, Patrick Mahomes, you're in a division with Justin Herbert, and then you have the Raiders with, you know, Devontae Adams. 
Jacoby Myers. So I think it will be very important for the Broncos to build up that pass defense in that division. So I think they're going to go with Kenyon Mitchell. I think Kenyon Mitchell has just risen up the board just due to his combine, senior bowl. It's 1A, 1B with Terry and Arnold, but in this mock draft, we're going to go with Kenyon Mitchell, pick 12. Pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm not going to lie. I did have them going cornerback my last mock draft, but I think their corner, I think the defense is pretty solid. They got Wilkins. I, I think the Raiders are like in a solid spot defensively. So I think it's more of building up the trenches offensively and protecting their quarterback. So with this pick, I am going to go with Talise Fuwaga. To play right guard, right tackle. So we go to Lise Fuwaga. I think he fits that Antonio Pierce, like, mean mentality. Fuwaga, Mahler on the line. So we'll go Fuwaga. Pick 13. Pick 14, the New Orleans Saints. I think this pick is a bit of a no-brainer. They should go with Olu right here, protect the left-hand side. Penning hasn't really been doing his job. And I think Olu will be a great pick at left tackle. The Indianapolis Colts. I'm sure they've had their eyes on Brian Thomas Jr. Don't know if 15 is a good selection for Brian Thomas Jr. They can go cornerback. I've also had them pick Brock Bowers, but Bowers with the Chargers. So I think it's between cornerback or wide receiver. And I think they will go with... Interesting. Let's go. Let's make things interesting here. No. You know what? Pick 15, Indianapolis Colts. We are going to go with Brian Thomas Jr. Michael Pittman's there. Alec Pierce, Josh Downs. By them missing out on Brock Bowers, I believe just getting someone like Brian Thomas Jr. just to kind of just go on the go route, allow Pittman and Downs and Pierce to kind of work down the middle of the field. But I believe just giving Anthony Richardson just more receiving options and just more explosiveness on that offense. And when you're in the division with the Texans and the Jaguars, you're going to have to score points in that division to make it to the playoffs. And I think Brian Thomas Jr. just brings that additional element to their passing game. Shane Steichen would have a field day just scheming that offense up. So Brian Thomas Jr. to the Colts. Pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks. This is where I can see the Seahawks trading back. I don't think they have a second. No, they don't. They don't have a second round pick. I know the, the Seahawks general manager has a great relationship with the Green Bay Packers. So in this mock draft, and I think this could potentially happen in the draft, I can see the Green Bay Packers trading up with the Seahawks. Great relationship with one another. So we're going to go Seahawks and Packers trade. So we're going to go Seahawks and Packers. And they'll the 16th. They'll give them the 25th. They'll give them their second round pick and then they'll give them an additional fourth so it'll be the seahawks 16th and their fourth round pick for the green base 25th and green Bay second round pick there'll be a trade i think this pick for the green bay packers is going to be tarion arnold 1a 1b cornerback but with mitchell gone i think the packers should just get aggressive and trade up for tarion arnold with Jeff Halfley there as defensive coordinator, I'm sure they're going to be running a lot of nickel. And with nickel, you're going to need to have your best three cornerbacks on the field. So it's either Jair on one end, Taryn on the other, and they get a slot, whether that's Valentine or Stokes working the slot, or Jair on one end, Taryn works the slot, and then Valentine and Stokes can battle for the number two on the opposite end. So you need to have your best three cornerbacks, and I think this will be a solid pick for the Green Bay Packers to trade up and get Taryn Arnold and boost up that pass defense, especially when you're going against, you know, Justin Jefferson twice a year. And um, Elmo Ron St. Brown, Laporta, I think it's vital for the Packers to build up that pass defense. 
pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they go corner, they can go receiver. I think in this spot, I can see a trade down as well. Um, I'm sure the Jaguars would love to have Brian Thomas Jr., but the Colts got him. They can go edge here with Jared Verse. They can go cornerback, but I believe there could be a trade down scenario with the Jaguars. Um, I'm going to do trade with the Eagles and the Jaguars. Um, if the Eagles are going to trade up, it's because they're going to build up the offensive line. The Bengals may need some line help. The Rams may need some line help, and so do the Steelers. So I think the Eagles are going to want to punch those three teams ahead for this pick. So we're going to go Eagles and the Jaguars. Eagles and Jaguars, 17-22. Not enough. All right. Perfect. Here are the Eagles. The Eagles. J.C. Latham. Right guard, right tackle. I'm sure by them getting Saquon Barkley and them losing Jason Kelsey, I think it's very important for the Eagles to build up that offensive line. So, so I believe to me, if you ask me, Eagle fans, you may not agree with what I have to say, but if the Eagles are going to trade up, it's definitely just to build up the line. I believe J.C. Latham will be a great trade-up option for the Philadelphia Eagles. Pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals. This, to me right here, is the pick for Byron Murphy. They're in a tough division, very gritty, grinding division with the Steelers, the Ravens, um, and I believe that for the um, the Bengals to at least make a playoff run, you're gonna have to stop the run, especially like you know with the Browns as well. I'm sure Nick Chubb is gonna be recovering, and the Browns love to run the ball with Nick Chubb when he comes back. Got to stop the run. There is a need on the defensive line. I believe getting someone like Byron Murphy for the Bengals, I think that'll be a huge, huge help for the Bengals. Pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams. I think right here, I think, you know, the Rams had J.C. Latham fell here. I think that would have been a great pick. But with Jerry Reverse still lingering here, I think this would be a no-brainer pick for the Rams. Jerry Reverse, you fell down a little bit, but you're getting picked up by the Los Angeles Rams. Pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Definitely a trench pick. Definitely a trench pick. Um, I think it's between Barton and... Or Marius Mims. Let's go with a Marius Mims. Let's go with Marius Mims. I know um, a Marius Mims has been asked a lot of questions about wanting to go to the Steelers, and he's been getting a bit excited. But I think it's vital for the uh, Steelers to get a tackle in the first round. I think yes, they need a center, but I think pick twenty is a bit too too rich for them to get a center i'm sure there's a lot of center depth in this draft that they can get but um let's just go with the marius mims pick 20 the miami dolphins lots you still there um i think the dolphins are another team that may need to acquire some capital so they have like their first round pick, second round pick. And then after that, their next pick is until the fifth round. So I can see that. This, so we're going to go trade here. We're going to go with the Dolphins. They're going to trade back with the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are in love with Latu. Get some edge help. So we're going to do trade. Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Give them a third. Trade. Pick 21, the Buccaneers, lot two. Pick 22, the Jacksonville Jaguars. There is wide receiver help. They can go cornerback. They can go edge. I think, honestly, 
they can get someone like Cooper DeGene. I mean, where they were at 17, I think that was a bit too high maybe, but I believe them missing out on Brian Thomas Jr. and whoever they have loved that they missed out on, I think going to pick 22 and just building up that pass defense, you're going to have to stop C.J. Stroud twice a year. Um, You're going to have to stop Anthony Richardson twice a year. So building up that pass defense is definitely vital. Cooper DeGene is, you know, jack of all trades, play safety, nickel, outside boundaries. I think having like a chess piece uh, defensive back on that defense will be huge for this Jaguars team. So Cooper DeGene, Jacksonville Jaguars. Pick 23, the Los Angeles Chargers. They got Brock Bowers. We are going to build up the trench here with the second first round pick. They're going to go Tyler Guyton. I don't know if he's a day one starter or not. I don't think he is, but I believe that him just being um, left tackle, right tackle, right tackle flexibility, but mostly on the right side. um, I think it should just give him a year just to develop. So I think Tyler Guyton will be a, a nice pick on the right side for the Chargers while letting Slater work the left side. Pick 24. The Dallas Cowboys, they definitely need interior help. So I think right here will be a Graham Barton pick right here. Dallas Cowboys, Graham Barton. Pick 25, the Seattle Seahawks. There's tackle help. There's edge help. D-line. I think they can go with... I think they can go with chop. I think they can go with chop. Add some more pass rush to that defense. I think chop will be a great fit for the Seattle Seahawks, especially with their coach being, you know, very defensive minded. Um, Definitely a defense, defense first round pick. And I think chop will be a great pass rush specialist on the Seahawks. Pick 26, the Miami Dolphins. I get someone like Jazan Newton. But me personally, I think they go with JPJ. He could play center. He could play guard. I think it's a a huge help for the Dolphins. JPJ to the Dolphins. Pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals. I think right here is a corner pick. So pick 27, Nate Wiggins. Pick 28, the Buffalo Bills. Stephon Diggs got traded. Gabe Davis is with the Jaguars. They need receiving help for Josh Allen. So not too much explanation here. You're going to go with Mitchell to the Bills. Pick 29, the Detroit Lions. I've mocked Edge to partner up with Aiden Hutchinson, but the cornerback position is a serious need. And this is someone that they've met with a few times and I can see the Lions picking them. So right here, this is going to be Kool-Aid McKinstry, Detroit Lions. Pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens. There's tackle help, receiver help, corner help. I think this can there could uh, be a trade here because I think there's teams like the Niners may need tackle help, Chiefs, Patriots. So we're going to go trade here. We're going to go Baltimore Ravens, and we're going to have the Commanders sneak into the first round. Too much. All right, cool. So the Commanders are going to sneak into the first round and just build up the offensive line. Commanders. That offensive line was poor last year. If you're going to get your future quarterback in Drake May, you're in a tough division. You're going to have to protect him. They get someone like Jordan Morgan. Pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers. They definitely need to look forward for the future. You know, with Trent Williams, I'm sure he has a year or two left. So I think it'll be smart for them to um, build up the trench. Jazan Newton is still there. We're going to go with a trade here. I know I'm going a bit trade heavy in round one, but this is what I can see can occur. Um, You never know what could happen on draft day, but we'll go trade here with the 49ers. And this team is going to go up and get their quarterback of the future without wasting any time. 
They took care of the right side of the line because he is a lefty quarterback. Now they get that lefty quarterback. So we're going to go with San Fran and the Raiders. 31-24. Yeah, they're moving up 13 spots, so they're going to have to throw in some extra capital, but we'll just let the simulator just pick it up. It's a two-round mock draft, so we'll trade it here. The Raiders sneak into the first round. They're going to get Michael Penix Jr. Yes, they have Garner Mishu, They have AOC. But Michael Penix is just a perfect Raider quarterback. Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers. They have the tight end of Michael Mayers. They, um, they got Fuwaga right side. Build up his blind side. Penix is just a perfect Raider quarterback. You need to sling the ball in that division with the Chargers and Mahomes to keep up. So Penix, gunslinger, get that lefty quarterback, Antonio Pierce. Pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs. To me here, I think they should go with a receiver. Hollywood Brown is only there for a year. Rashi Rice is getting into some legal trouble. We don't know what's going on, but we won't get into that. I think they should go with a receiver here. And we're going to go with Xavier Worthy. Add a speedy weapon to the Kansas City Chiefs. Pick 33, the Carolina Panthers. I think they go receiver here with the first uh, pick of the second round. We're going to go with McConkey, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. And I think, you know, McConkey and Mingo will give Bryce Young a nice receiving option. So I think McConkey would be a great fit for the Panthers. I think you could put him in the slot boundary. They can get flexible with McConkey, McConkey to the Panthers. Pick 34, the New England Patriots. They got their quarterback with the future, Jaden Daniels. Now it's time to get him some weapons because they need some more playmakers on that offense. We are going to go with Troy Franklin. Pick 35, the Arizona Cardinals. They got Marvin Harrison Jr., they got Nate Wiggins. I think they go D-line here. Jazan Newton has been falling down a bit. He has not tested. Um, so we'll go Jazan Newton. Pick 36, the Baltimore Ravens. I think the perfect receiver fit for the Ravens is Keon Coleman, Zay Flowers, Keon Coleman. Then you have Mark Andrews, and then you have Derrick Henry. I think Keon Coleman will give him like a big slot boundary jump ball specialist if they're in the red zone in the red zone Lamar can just kind of just throw the ball up in the air catch ball situation so Keon Coleman this is the perfect fit for the Baltimore Ravens as they trade down and get their receiver Keon Coleman pick 37 the Los Angeles Chargers they got their tight end Brock Bowers they got a developmental right side lineman Tyler Guyton I think here they can either go receiver, but I think this might be a bit too high for, you know, the next receiver off the board with Ricky. I think they get Ennis Rachel Jr. to be opposite of Asante Samuel Jr. I think that those are a pretty good solid three picks for the Chargers. Got the tight end that Harborough has wanted, but could too high at pick five. Get the right side taken care of on the line to protect um, Herbert. And then build up that pass defense against someone like Ennis Rachel Jr. opposite of Asante. I think that's a, a solid draft for the Chargers. Pick 38, the Tennessee Titans. They got Joe Alt in the first round. They can go receiver here. Uh D line edge. Let's see who could be some you know great options for the Tennessee Titans. Honestly. I think the Titans should get themselves a receiver. I think they should go get themselves a receiver. Um, we don't know how long Hop Hopkins is going to play. I know they have Ridley, but if you're protecting the blind side for Will Levis, just give him more. Just give him more receiving options. So we'll just give him a receiver here. We are going to go with. 
Xavier Leggett. Xavier Leggett to the Titans. I think that'll be a great trio receiving options for Levis as Joe Alt protects his blind side. Hopkins, Ridley, Leggett. I think that's where you can kind of turn up Levis into um, a solid quarterback in that division with those options. Pick 39, the Carolina Panthers. They got McConkey at pick 33. Go get your center of the future, Zach Frazier, pick 39. Pick 40, the Washington Commanders. Drake May, Jordan Morgan. I think this is a cornerback pick here. And Kamari Lassiter, cornerback. Pick 41, the Green Bay Packers. They got very aggressive, traded up for the cornerback. Terry and Arnold, I think that's a very smart play for the Packers to get the corner that they want to kind of build up that nickel pass defense. Hopefully, Jair stays healthy, Stokes stays healthy, and I think that pass defense is going to be very solid with Arnold in the mix. So with pick 41, it is very smart for the Packers to build up the offensive line now. Um, that depth chart in terms of that line isn't good. Rashid Walker needs some competition on the left side, and God forbid um, Zach Tom gets hurt. They need a backup on the right side, but the Packers are one of the you know top organizations in terms of developing offensive linemen. Um, Kingsley had a great combine. He's someone that isn't a day one starter, but in a great situation going to the Packers as they let him develop. Um, great fit for the Packers. So Kingsley to the Green Bay Packers. Pick 42, the Houston Texans. They can go cornerback here. D-line. Let's see who is on the board still. Darius Robinson's been falling a little bit. Darius Robinson has been falling. Okay. We are going to give the Houston Texans a linebacker. We'll give them Edron Cooper. Pick 47, the Atlanta Falcons. They got their edge in Dallas Turner. I think it's very vital for them to either get a corner or a receiver here, but I think they go corner here. It's between Mike Sanristo or TJ Tampa, but I think AJ Terrell needs a running mate. Mike is more of a slot, so we're going to go with TJ Tampa. Do we go with TJ Tampa? Should we go with TJ Tampa? Nah, that might be a bit too high for TJ Tampa. I think that might be a bit too high for TJ Tampa. You know what? Braden Fisk. We go D line there. Pick 44, the San Francisco 49ers. I think Ricky is a sleeper, sleeper receiving option for the 49ers. I don't think we know. I don't think we know what's going to happen with Brandon Ayuk. Either he gets traded or not, but they need to give, you know, Brock additional receiving options. I'm sure they're okay with now, especially with Ayuk still there, but I'm sure Brock is the franchise quarterback for that organization. And I think Ricky is a sleeper option. So I think we'll go Ricky. We'll know, let's, let's go with the assumption that Ayuk leaves. Let's go with the assumption we'll go with Ricky to the 49ers. Olu to the Saints at pick 14, but I think this is where the fall ends for Darren Robinson. I do know that Olave needs a running mate. I don't think Wilson can kind of help with that. I don't think Corley can help with that. I think you know, pick 45, and then Corley's here rated at 60. I think it's a bit too high. So I think it's between either D-line or the edge, but you just go with Darius Robinson at an edge to the Saints. Pick 46, the Indianapolis Colts. They got a home run pick in Brian Thomas Jr. That's huge for that offense. And I think at this pick, they go corner. By them skipping on the pass defense in round one, they got the receiving option. They definitely take care of the pass defense in round two. So we go corner, and I think right here, this is where they go TJ Tampa. I think he fits that style, TJ Tampa. Pick 47, the New York Giants. They definitely cannot leave this draft without getting a quarterback. Um, they can either wait until round three to get maybe like 
Spencer Rattler or maybe wait a little bit and get someone like Michael Pratt. But I don't want to risk it. Um, and it's a two-round mock draft. So we'll go quarterback here. We'll go with Bo Nix. And I'm sure they're going to test Daniel Jones out and see how he does with Malik Neighbors there. But if things don't work out, Daniel Jones is gone. Drew Locke is only there for a year. He's probably gone after the season. So Dable will do his best to develop Bo Nix. And if things don't work out, there will probably be a sign at MetLife Stadium saying tank for 2026 draft, Archie Manning. But we'll just go with Bo Nix and not talk about Archie Manning in the 2026 NFL draft. So Bo Nix, New York Giants, pick 47. Pick 48, Jacksonville Jaguars. They got Cooper DeGene to kind of help out that pass defense. I think here it will be smart for them to go with the receiver. They're going to go with Corley. I believe, you know, Gabe Davis is there. Christian Kirk is there. So I think we need to kind of um, add more receiving options to there. I mean, they did, you know, they didn't get Brian Thomas Jr. in the first round, but I think they need to kind of make that up in the second round. So they'll get Corley, pick 48. Pick 49, the Cincinnati Bengals. They went with Byron Murphy in the first round. I think here they should go with Jatavian Sanders, tight end. I think this is a great option for the Bengals. If you know, Brock fell to 18, 100% Brock is going to the Bengals, but they took care of the defensive trench. So there goes Sanders tight end. Pick 50, the Philadelphia Eagles. They trade up a few spots to get JC Latham, build up the offensive line. I think here this is where they can um, get a slot receiver. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. Um, get a slot, and I think Roman Wilson fits that slot receiver that they're looking for. I think that would be a solid trio and a solid offense for the Eagles. Imagine just Brown, Smith, Roman Wilson, Saquon Barkley. I think that would have such a juggernaut offense. So I think getting a slot receiver in Roman Wilson will be huge for the Eagles. Pick 51, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got Marius Mims in the first round. I don't think they go with an interior lineman in the second round again. They can go receiver. I think this might be a bit too rich for the receiver after Wilson. They can go corner. You know what? I think they can go linebacker here. I think they can go linebacker here. I mean, yes, they can get a corner and go opposite of Joey Porter Jr., but I think they go linebacker and get someone like Peyton Wilson, Peyton Wilson, Patrick Queen, just build up that steel curtain defense, and Wilson is a menace. I mean, he plays with his head on fire. Yes, there are some injury concerns, lengthy injury history, but the the guy had an amazing combine, and he's proven himself to be um, a, a round two pick. Getting Wilson next to Patrick Queen, that would build a scary defense. I think that would be a solid pick for the Steelers to get someone like Peyton Wilson around two. Pick 52, the Los Angeles Rams. They got Jared Verse at pick 19. They can go D-line to kind of um, replace Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is 101, so I don't want you thinking like no one could re- – obviously no one could replace Aaron Donald, but at some point – you're going to have to build up that defensive line to uh, fill that void. So they can go with Chris Jenkins here. They can go cornerback. Um, but I think by them going with Jared Verse, I think they should kind of start fixing up that pass defense. I mean, Jalen Ramsey left the Rams a few years ago. Um, and then with um, Witherspoon, he had a solid season, but – he hasn't been resigned to the Rams, so I think it's very vital for the Rams to kind of fix that pass defense and kind of fill those voids as well. So we'll go with Max Melton here to the Rams. Pick 53, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They got Cooper DeGene, Corley. They can, so I think right here they can go D-line or edge, but I think it will be smart for them to get a defensive lineman in Chris Jenkins, I guess. Great, great defensive lineman in the draft. And I think that can help open up, you know, some blitzing lanes for Josh Allen. And I think this will be a solid 
defensive draft for the Jaguars so far. You got Cooper DeJean helping out the pass defense, Chris Jenkins in the trenches, and then Josh Allen coming off the edge. I think this will be a solid, solid draft for the Jaguars the first two rounds. Pick 54, the Cleveland Browns. They can go sweat. There's a linebacker need here. They can go receiver. I think here, I think they can go linebacker here in Junior Colson. Stud linebacker, he's a three down linebacker. He's not someone that's going to come crashing down. He's a very patient linebacker. He waits for the play to develop before making his move. Um, but I believe this game, someone like Junior Colson, he barely misses tackles. And I think it's very vital in this Brown solid defense. So we go Junior Colson, linebacker for the Browns. The Miami Dolphins pick two, second um, second round. Um, they got JPJ in the first round. This is where you kind of have to get a defensive lineman to kind of fill that void. And with Wilk- Wilkins going to the Raiders, here you get to Vonjay Sweat, big body defensive lineman. He could take the center and the guard at the same time. This would be a great pick for the Dolphins to kind of make up that defensive line void. Pick 56, the Dallas Cowboys. They got Graham Barton taking care of the interior. They definitely need to kind of take care of the left side. They get this might be a bit too rich for Patrick Paul here. They can go receiver. They can go running back. But honestly, I think the Cowboys. We should the Cowboys get. We can get Jonathan Brooks. It's a deep receiver class. Um so I think the Cowboys can hold off until late day two to get a receiver. So we won't go receiver there. So we'll go with the running back here. You go running back? Yeah, we'll go running back here. Uh, we are going to go with Trey Benson. Trey Benson to the Cowboys. Pick 57, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They trade up and got lot two. So here they are, round two. There's corner help. They need to help in the interior wide receiver. I think here they could build up the interior Cooper BB. I think he can play both guard positions, left guard, right guard. This dude is an ox. I mean, he could just stand his ground and you might could even probably try him out at center, but I think BB will be um, a great option for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to build up that interior line. Pick 58, the Seattle Seahawks. They got Chop Robinson in the first round. I'm sure there's also some line help. You can go D-line, interior line. What should the Seahawks do? What should the Seahawks do? I think they can go lineman here. I think they can go lineman here. Um... It's a matter of who they decide to choose. We are going to go with, you know what? We'll go with, this might be a bit of a reach, but we'll go with Christian Haynes here. Christian Haynes here. I think it's a bit of a reach, but we'll kind of just build the interior of the Seattle Seahawks. Pick 59, the Houston Texans. They got Edgerton Cooper. I think that's a solid pick for the, for the Texans. Edwin Cooper, they can go D-line here. They can go corner. I honestly think they should build the defensive trench. D'Amico Ryan's is defensive-minded uh, coach. So I think they get someone in the trenches here. So it's either Rook or Michael Hall Jr. I can see them getting someone like... Rook or Michael Hall? We'll go, you know, we'll go with Rook. I think Rook, very raw, high upside. And I think D'Amico Ryans could unleash some potential in him. So I think Rook would be a solid pick for the Texans. So I think Texans had a solid, you know, defensive round two with Cooper and Rook. So I think that will be great for the Texans right there. Pick 60, the Buffalo Bills. They got their receiver in the first round. I think here they go safety. Tyler Newbin. I don't think they re-signed Micah Hyde, Porters with the Dolphins. They need 
they need someone to play safety in that organization. So they'll go Tyler Newbin. The Detroit Lions, they got Kool-Aid McKinstry, pick 29. I think this is where they will get an edge at this spot. Either edge or D-line. Yeah, I think it's between edge or D-line. Um, I think Brazewell has fell a bit. I think it's either edge or D-line for the Lions. Hmm, interesting. We are going to go with... We'll go with... Brazewell. We'll go with Brazewell. Edge. Add an edge to that room. The Baltimore Ravens. Pick 62. They got Keon Coleman. Receiver at pick 36. They can go tackle. Cornerback. Let's see who the Ravens can get. Edge help. I think they go. I think Mike Samristel has fell a bit. Yeah. Mike Samristel is a ball hawking corner yes he played a lot of slot but look at what he did this past season with michigan ball hawking defensive back and i think getting someone like mike sam still on the ravens ball hawk we'll we'll go mike sam still to the ravens pick 63 the san francisco 49ers i honestly think they can get someone no i think it's more of a reach here for the next corner They can get a tackle, D-line, edge. I'm going to have to go with, I'm going to have to go with Marshawn Nealon. Chase Young did not come back, and I think um, both sudden he's a running mate on the opposite end. That 4-3 defense, you need to get after the quarterback. Bosa can't do it alone. We'll, we'll go with Marshawn Nealon. I think that'll be solid for the 49ers. And I think Nealon is a second round pick, so I can't have him falling out of the second round and going to the third round. So Nealon's definitely a second round pick, and I think the stop is at the 49ers. Now, pick 64, the Kansas City Chiefs. Last pick of round two. There's corner help that they need. With um, Sneed going to the Titans, I'm sure the Chiefs could wait a little bit on day two. I mean, you can see like the depth of the cornerback position. I mean, Renardo Green will be solid for the Chiefs. Brownlee, Andrew Phillips. So there, there are some solid options for the Chiefs in round three. Um, but I think it's very vital for them to kind of get someone for the future on that offensive line. And I think Patrick Paul, I think the fall stops for Patrick Paul. I'm not trying to rhyme, but the fall stops for Patrick Paul here at pick 64. Mahomes is the franchise quarterback. You have to protect him at all times. I think Patrick Paul is a solid lineman option to the Chiefs. So there we have it. My final mock draft before the NFL draft is this upcoming Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. But thank you so much. My final mock draft. See ya.